What we've seen happen with churches across the country, this is not every church, but you know, broadly churches, is they recognize that there is a problem. They recognize and can acknowledge that veteran suicide and homelessness and uh, the divorce rates being very high, you know, all of those are problems. But then they separate themselves from that by saying something like, we don't know how to deal with post-traumatic stress, or we don't know how to address those issues. And what I want to communicate to the church, what we work to communicate to the church is, look, you might need someone who has that experience to be the bridge that works with these veterans, but the solutions for any broken marriage, the solution for anyone who's struggling with uh, addictions of any kind, uh, the, the solution for sin is the exact same. The solution for brokenness is the exact same. Hi, everyone. I'm Nick Vujicic, and I'm so excited that you've decided to join us here at Champions for the Brokenhearted. First, I want to say a huge thank you to each and every one of you who are financially supporting us and praying for us. For those of you who have had the generous hearts to support us, I want to say it's because of that support that enables the Nick Vujicic Ministries to see the brokenhearted healed in Jesus' name. Amen. And for those of you uh, who are watching and you want to learn more about the circle of champions where you can be a part of what God is doing through this ministry, please go check out our website. This month, Champions for the Brokenhearted is highlighting veterans, and it is my privilege to welcome back a hero and friend of mine, Jeremy Stalnecker, who's right now, we're doing this virtual interview from California to the great state of Texas where we are here. And I just want to tell you, If you don't know much about the veterans crisis happening in our nation, many of us have heard reports that for years, 22 veterans a day have been committing suicide. And here in the incredible city of Dallas, we have the most densely populated veterans who are homeless um, problem right here in Dallas. It really is sad. We we understand that there is more, if you will, awareness of it. There are even churches saying, we know about the problem, but we don't know how to help engage in helping our veterans. And today, if that's been a thought of yours, God, how can we be the hands and feet and see brokenhearted people be healed and that gap be filled with the people of God? I'm just going to tell you, please listen, get a coffee, put pause on this video, get comfortable because this is something you cannot miss. I want to tell you that Jeremy Stalnecker, not only is he someone who's had his incredible uh, knowledge and experience and passion on the topics of veterans, but we truly feel that Jeremy's ministry, the Mighty Oaks Foundation, are one of our lifetime partners of Life Without Limbs. We have chosen to partner with them because we are blessed, blessed, honored, and emotional anytime we hear about the families that are affected with veterans healed through the foundation. I'll tell you right now, they have different activities. I'll give you the website later and ways that you can plug into that ministry to also be the hands and feet. But here's a little bit of background on Jeremy. He is a USMC infantry officer, an author, speaker, and co-founder and CEO of the Mighty Oaks Foundation, a nonprofit organization that is fully dedicated to helping America's military warriors and their families who are suffering from unseen wounds of combat and other PTSD struggles. And I'll tell you right now, obviously, it's one of the most complex, I think, in our nation where it does take education and it does take time to learn about the layers of such. But I just want to say, Jeremy, there is no one that I would rather have back on the show than you. And it's an honor 
to join you virtually. So Jeremy, first of all, again, thank you for your service. Thank you for your passion, your dedication through Mighty Oaks Foundation in really being the hands and feet of God to really help veterans and their families. Um, and lastly, before we get into our first question, if you have not watched our first interview together, I highly recommend you to do so today. Um, you can then come back and pick up right where you left off. But I'm going to tell you that last interview last year, I was so moved. Go to the web page, go to the link below, check it out. Jeremy Stalnecker, my brother, my man in Christ, fist bump, hoorah! I love you. Great to be with you, Nick. Man, it's awesome to be with you. I, I am so uh, so grateful for you, for your friendship, and the fact that you are aware enough and willing enough to not only bring awareness to the issues that we deal with, but on the other side of awareness, because awareness is only good as, as good as the solution, uh, to point to the solution. And um, man, I, I love you. I'm so grateful for you and, and really just blessed to be with you right now. You know, Jeremy, time and time again, I've been um, at so many churches across America and I used to actually hug, meet and greet everyone after the speech. And, and I, I, I've never felt so unqualified, ill-prepared when someone comes up to me and says, I've got PTSD, I've, I was in the military, this and this and this happened to me. Do you know a resource that I can go to or someone I can talk to? And for so many years, my heart just fell through the floor um, and, and I'm looking at it and I'm like, I'm so sorry, I'm going to pray for you, but you know, let's get your contact information. We'll connect you to some resource later down the track. But I tell you, I, that's why I was so excited and so humbled and grateful for the Mighty Oaks Foundation, your podcast, your heart, your story, um, and your relentlessness just to go after that, uh, that, that person who's isolated themselves, who, who doesn't know how to talk to anyone. Um, the Mighty Oaks Foundation, my favorite veterans organization ever and ever will be. Thank you for being our partner, Jeremy. Catch us up on what the Mighty Oaks Foundation has been focusing in on for the last year. Yeah, and you said this, but I would encourage everyone to go watch our last podcast and 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 listen to that as a starting point. But the last year, it, it's it sounds funny to say, but it's doing more of the same. We've been serving veterans, active duty service members, first responders, spouses, and families for the last 12 years. And it, it's been interesting. You know, people have all, always come to us and said, hey, what are you going to do when the war's end? And what are you guys going to do? How are you going to shift? Because there won't be a need. And what we've seen is that across our country, the need has continued to increase uh, of just men and women who are struggling with post-traumatic stress and uh, Issues related to combat trauma, or even as we talked about on our last, uh, the last conversation we had, trauma related to their childhood that they brought into the military and it's been exacerbated by their service. Those issues have not gone away. If anything, they've increased. So we as an organization have been very focused this year in particular on growth. How do we serve more folks, more sessions, more locations? How do we service the growing list of applications that we have? And God's been very good to us as we've leaned into this. It's amazing as you lean into what God calls you to do. And this should make sense, right? But we don't always think about it this way. But when we lean into what God has called us to do, doors open. And, and that's been the year for us. It's been um, great. It's been chaotic and crazy, but it's been amazing. We've been able to serve a lot of folks. And we're on track this year to have about a 1,000 students, you know, men or women, come through one of our programs. Next year, um, we will add about a third to that. So um, on track to continue meeting the needs as they come our direction. That's awesome. Uh, and if, if, if any of you viewers have ever prayed or wanted to know, hey, what organization are really doing um, the effective moving the needle result for the veterans in our nation? There is nothing better, in my opinion, than the Mighty Oaks Foundation. So uh, we'll give you the website later. Um, Jeremy, uh, first of all, again, thank you for what you do. You know, we hear of the reports. We, we, we know that for many years, 
uh, nearly two decades now, it's been reported that uh, the daily veteran suicide is at around 20. Some people say 22. Some people say 20. Uh, is that still true today? What's 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 the real pulse? So, man, first of all, I'll say that's really hard to nail down. Um, but I'll give you some some statistics. An organization called America's Warrior Partnership. Uh, I had it pulled up on my phone because I knew we'd be talking about this. America's Warrior Partnership, you can go to their website if you want to see this report, but they did a several year study going back to 2018. The study was released in 2021, and they're trying to get to the heart of what this issue actually looks like. The VA, um, the government, they don't benefit from having big numbers. They benefit from having low numbers. After this uh, report was pushed out, uh, again, America Warrior Partnership, it's called Operation Deep Dive. This was their study, and, and there's so much data here. But some key points. They said at least 44 former service members daily uh, is the daily suicide rate. At least 44 wow. former service members is the daily suicide rate. So we talk about, you know, it used to be 20, and then 22 is what we all settled on. Last year, the VA said it was closer to 17. Um, those of us that work in this space have always said there's no way it's even 20. It has to be higher than that. And this study says it's probably closer to, to 44. Now, here's the next part of this. It's really interesting. Uh, they reported that 25% of states undercount former service member suicide deaths, 25%. So it's hard to get a pulse, right? Because the, the rate of reporting is so low. Um, this, this one blew me away. Those who served in the military for less than three years we're at greater risk for suicide. Less than three years, we're at greater risk for suicide. And often we tie these suicides. We say, well, that was a life spent in the military, a life of deployments. And after that, there is no hope. Uh, really, this is a problem that goes back to these 21-year-old young men and women who are getting out of the military and don't know where to go from here. And then on through that. So um <laughs> the answer to your question is we don't exactly know, but it's much higher than the number that's been reported. Yeah, and it's so sad. It's a tragedy, uh, you know, and, and in our country, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of us have this myth that veterans, right, especially years back, now there's more awareness. But man, uh, everyone just assumed that, well, of course, the veterans are taken care of for life. And and they're treated like heroes by our government for life. We're so patriotic. Uh, but but then the reality really is, is that 20% of homeless men in, uh, are actually veterans. 20% of the homeless are veterans, one in five. And then, Jeremy, the, the risk of suicide among veterans is 57% higher than those who have not served in combat. Um, divorce rates, uh, around 30% higher among combat veterans and then obviously when 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 these people are going to their counselors and their doctors um who can't say the word jesus i mean that's yeah. th that was you know and 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 i know many veterans that are on 21 different medications every single day and yes drugs help but sometimes it goes a little overboard and and then they've got these addictions uh, to all these substances um, and and the PTSD exponentially compounded with all these things and then the the fear of telling someone about what they're really going you know what 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 they're really going through it's just so sad and heavy and and when we look at the church and even the average American um, you know. <laughs> Now that there is more awareness, can I say it this way? How real is it for me to say, when do you think and how do you think best the average church and the average American will actually realize, wow, they're actually not getting the help that they need. They are in a tragic position that we ought to honor those as much as we can, who've given everything of themselves for our nation, our freedom. What are you hoping for that our nation really is, is brought to as a nation and say, you know what, 
We're finally going to take care of, of this is enough. Enough is enough. And, you know, politicians and politics are politics. Everyone's always going to highlight it on their elections, right? What is it that you think is going to move the needle in our nation to, to really meet that need? Yeah, it's a complex question, obviously, but there are a couple of things and you, you layered a few things in there. First of all, I'll say this. We have been deficient on the political scene of having veterans serving. So whether it's members of you know, the House or this, um, the Senate, they're just historically, we've had a lot of veterans. We kind of went through a period of time where there were not that many. And now we're seeing more and more men and women who have served in the military and because of 20 years of war have served in combat that are now serving in Congress. And that is a huge step forward for us. Um, conversations that even as an organization, we weren't able to have 10 years ago, men and women, elected officials are coming to us saying, what can we do? Uh, Mighty Oaks is involved in a study right now of, of veteran suicide that is being done specifically for some members of Congress who asked for that information. And so some of that is changing and that's what it's going to take. It's going to take you know, men and women who are elected to go to Washington, understand this is a real issue. They have a personal connection to it. And then they bring it um, to the House floor and then bring it to the Senate. And then, you know, laws are passed. But what needs to happen, and that's that's one layer, and that's very important and very helpful. But what needs to happen on the government side, and, you know, we'll say the Veterans Administration, the VA needs to look at modalities, um, treatments that are working and have worked to treat these mental health issues. The Veterans Administration, the VA, hospitals, very good at treating the body, uh, very good at providing that level of support. But when you remove Jesus, when you remove the spiritual component from uh, struggles emotionally and mental health struggles, you are removing the foundation <laughs> not only on which the life can be built, but which help can be found. And again, this is not political, but depending on who sits in the White House, there is either support for faith-based solutions to the VA or not. Right now, we're at a moment where the faith-based solutions office with the VA has been shut down. And what we have to do politically and what the government needs to do is say, all right, what has helped? What has worked? Let's get behind that, even if it doesn't fit our model or our template, even if it's outside of clinical care. And that's a fight that organizations like Mighty Oaks are engaged in. On the political front, we advocate for faith-based programs, not just Mighty Oaks, but other faith-based programs. So that's happening. So one layer is we need politicians who have experience in the military and in combat, have a personal connection to these issues, and can move you know, legislatively on behalf of those. We need then government officials who are uh, ha have really been put in a position to deal with this, to look at the slate of options and say, I don't necessarily maybe agree with the faith-based faith option, but there's real data to demonstrate that it is successful. Let's at least make that an option. So that would be huge. And then on the church side, this is, this is probably the layer of uh, your question, what can be done that, that bothers me the most. I don't expect much from the government. I hope we advocate, we push, you know, we support, but I don't expect a lot there. What has happened though, and what we've seen happen with churches across the country, this is not every church, but, you know, broadly churches, is they recognize that there is a problem. They recognize and can acknowledge that veteran suicide and homelessness and uh, the divorce rates being very high, you know, all of those are problems. But then they separate themselves from that by saying something like, we don't know how to deal with post-traumatic stress, or we don't know how to address those issues. And what I want to communicate to the church, what we work to communicate to the church is, look, you might need someone who has that experience to be the bridge that works with these veterans, but the solutions for 
any broken marriage, the solution for anyone who's struggling with uh, addictions of any kind, uh, the, the solution for sin is the exact same. The solution for brokenness is the exact same, whether you've served in the military or not. And if we really hold on to God's word, the truth of scripture, and we believe it's true and we believe it's sufficient, then we also as a church community have to believe it's sufficient to deal with the issues that the men and women who have served us are dealing with. Now, there's some nuance there. There are some techniques. There are some resources. You know, we talked about that a little bit before we started recording and the need for that. But fundamentally, the church needs to take the position that we have the truth and we need to figure out how to communicate that truth that we already hold with the men and women who have served us. Amen. And I and I think with, with regards to any brokenness that anyone has gone through in church, when someone sits someone down, if they're a counselor, the counselor never under really stands, sorry, never really understands what that person's gone through anyway, whether right. it's this or right. that. I love how you've actually just 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 filtered through those filters that are, are too complicated and, and down to the simplicity of it's Jesus, it's love, it's someone it's taking yeah. care enough in their life and saying tell me what you've gone through and going through that now obviously there's resources and nuances tell us more about those resources and your website and and where the church can go to be more equipped and uh, to be the hands and feet so we have spent a lot of time developing actual resources that is books on our website there's a tab at the top it says watch and that's just hundreds of interviews and stories dealing with these issues. On our store, on our website, you can find books that we've written on post-traumatic stress and spiritual resiliency, other topics related to these issues. Um, so that's one place. And we're continuing to develop resources. I mentioned that we're in the process of developing a, a resource on the topic of suicide from a biblical perspective. How do we address that? But then what can the church do and what can family members do to support those who are struggling. So we continue to develop those resources. You can find those on our website. The other thing, and I think this is, you know, very important for churches to understand, and you mentioned this, you know, having veterans come to you and say, what do I need to do? The church has a program that they can point to for the men and women that they serve in their congregation. That's our program. It's five days long. There's no cost to attend. There's no cost for travel. We have facilities across the country. We do all the logistics. We do all of the scheduling. Uh, we move folks to where they need to be. And we have donors who get behind us and, and make it possible for us to pay for it. So as a resource, a church can say to a veteran in their congregation who's struggling, hey, there's a program. It's faith focused. It's not clinical. They'll cover all of the cost. Five days. It's all you need to give. And if you'll do that, we'll you know, help to equip you to get there. So that's a great resource as well. And we've tried to be that. We have a program that a church can connect to that is a resource. We have books and other, you know, written resources, uh, podcasts, other media that we do, all to serve the church. And, and we have this conversation often. I had this conversation with another ministry last week. Our goal, ultimate goal, like, like okay, Mighty Oaks, what is your goal when someone comes to your program? Our ultimate goal, you know, salvation, of course, um, an understanding of who God is and how they, they the student, needs to uh, live the life that God has called them to live. But where are we trying to move people to? For me, the win is a man or woman attends our program, broken, hurt, hopeless. They find what it is to have a relationship with Christ. And when they get home, they get involved in a local church because we believe that the local church is the answer to disciple to carry folks through, to support them and to help them. And so we've worked very hard to be a resource to the local church. And, you know, my prayer is that more churches will will use us that way. And many are, but prayer that, you know, many more would. Amen. Church, if you're listening to me right now, or you're a member of the church and you do want to know more about this, please go to the Mighty Oaks Foundation. Click on the link below. Uh, after this interview, please get to know them. Uh, thank you to all the donors of Mighty Oaks Foundation. And if you really want to put some kingdom seed somewhere to move the needle in the veterans tragedy here in America, to honor them, to, to see them healed, saved and, and redeemed, and then 
get plugged into the local church and, and be that community member uh, that is full of the joy of the Lord and healed, um, please go check out Mighty Oaks Foundation. Um, and, and for those of you who are maybe younger right now um, and you're watching this, uh, you've heard about PTSD. Uh, you you know some of the stories. Um, I, I, I too, though, want to encourage you that if God is calling you uh, to join the military and the service for our nation, um, to do so according to God's perfect will. Uh, anything that we do must be convicted by the Holy Spirit. Um, and and I, I know, Jeremy, that you know, as we hear these reports, we do need our military. They're our most valued people uh, for the security of our nation. Give us a, a, an encouraging word or two for the young man or woman who is prayerfully considering joining uh that that front line man nick i appreciate you bringing that question up that is so important we we talk about resiliency and what it means to be resilient um, i mentioned we have a little book on resiliency spiritual resiliency and, and fundamentally resilience a person who is resilient who lives a resilient life they have the ability to get knocked down but because they've already established their direction, when they do get knocked down, they're able to recalibrate or realign and continue moving forward. Life is challenging. It doesn't matter what job you have. There will be times in relationships and in jobs and just in the world where you're going to get knocked down or at least pushed aside. Things will happen. A resilient person is someone who has decided before the difficulty comes into their life the direction that they're going. And as a Christian, I believe that if we establish, and this is, I've got four kids. Uh, my youngest is a police officer in our community. My daughter is working for a large company here in Southern California. I have two teenage kids. I come back to the same thing again and again and again with them. You have to decide now whether or not you're going to serve God and decide now whether or not you're going to live for God. And if you make that decision ahead of time, then when the difficulties, the trials, whatever it is, comes into your life, you'll be able to align to that. When someone graduates from one of our programs, we ask them, tell them to do four things. <laughs> and these are the same four things I would say to a young person going into the military. And, and first of all, if you continue to serve our country, man, may the Lord bless you. We need men and women with integrity and character to stand up and defend our nation, defend our right to worship, defend those who cannot defend themselves, it's so important. It's a noble career. But as you get into that, understand there will be some difficult times and difficult things. So what should you do? I would encourage you to do those same four things. We call these the four Bs in our program, the four Bs. Be in the Word, be in prayer, be in community, and be in contact. Those four things. Be in the Word. That is spending daily time in God's Word, allowing God's Word to speak to your heart. Hebrews tells us that the Word of God, it cuts. It shows us who we really are. It is a light uh, and a lamp to our path. The psalmist said, be in the Word. Be every day in the Word. Be in prayer, spending time asking God to work in your heart and work in your life to align your will to His. This is hearing from God and speaking to God. This is aligning your life to who He is. And coming back to that on a daily basis, coming back to that again and again. And then be in community. Find a local congregation of believers, a local church where you can be around other like-minded folks. And I've been all over the world. I've been in, in combat and even in combat forward in Iraq, we had communities of believers that would come together and have church services. I put those in air quotes, church services, where we would um, sing a couple of songs and someone would read a passage and we talk about it, but that community of believers, you're in the word, hearing from God, you're in prayer, speaking to God, you're in a community of believers. And then finally be in contact, uh, contact with those people in your life who can hold you accountable. If you go into the military or you're in the military, don't run away from people that care about you. You have people that want to speak truth into your life and, and want to help you and encourage you be in contact with those folks and let them speak truth and I believe that anyone who is committed to living for God and is committed to those four Bs, be in the Word, be in prayer, be in community, be in contact, 
that they are going to be okay. And God is going to continue to use them as a light where they are. Amen. Amen. And amen. Uh, I love those four Bs. Uh, it's incredible. These these are basic but disciplinary ways yeah. in how God yeah. God helps us to know that He is always with us, and and we don't have to do this alone. Um, thank That's you, right. Jeremy, for that. I love that, Jeremy. Um, two last things um, for those of us who have a loved one uh, who's experiencing PTSD or they've come back. Um, from wherever they were deployed or training or the bases and they they're seeing some some changes in them since they've seen them or they've withdrawn um how can one best for a loved one uh be the advocate of hope for them it really depends on the person i i would say without knowing that person that someone has in mind right now, we talk about, you know, and I think there's a phrase, maybe even in a song, love them like Jesus. We need to love others uh, like Jesus loves us unconditionally, um, full of grace, truth when truth is willing to be listened to, but there has to be support. There has to be openness. And the best thing that you can do for a loved one who is struggling, particularly with these issues of trauma is to let them know you love them unconditionally, you care for them unconditionally, you're here for them, you want to hear from them. Let that be known. I would say with that, though, don't, <laughs> I don't know a better word, there's probably a better word, but don't nag them to get help that you think they need. Sometimes those who are hurting, when they're pushed, they continue to withdraw that's why we need to be open. I'm here for you. I love you. I care for you. Uh, I, I will always love you. There are resources I can plug you into. We can find help together and hope together when you're ready, but you need to know I'm here for you. And again, very broadly, that's what one needs to do. I think there are opportunities to hand a resource, a book. I know you served and these guys, they did too. They wrote this book on um, you know, post-traumatic stress or on resiliency, or uh, I wrote a book called March or Die about my time in Iraq, and it's infused with the gospel. Uh, I thought you might be interested in this. Here's a resource. It could be sending a link to a Mighty Oaks webpage to someone saying, I don't know what you're dealing with, or if this is interesting to you, just thought you might want to take a look at this. It's providing those resources, making it as easy as possible. But at the end of the day, it's being willing to listen and spend time together. It is amazing how when we set appointments to talk to people that we care about because we have an agenda and we want to get them somewhere, and I'm not always against that, but but often those are the times when people will withdraw or shut down. But when we go fishing or camping or on a long car ride or we just spend time together over coffee and there's no real agenda other than, Holy Spirit, please work as you see fit, that's when those opportunities open and we need to be ready. There will come a time when that man or woman needs you, and you need to be ready for that, and you need to be open, and you need, need to have been loving and kind so they know that they can come back to you with that, and then you can help them through that. Be prepared. Know what's available. Have the resources available. Offer those if that is received, but just be open and, and willing to listen. Amen. Amen. Beautifully said. Jeremy, lastly, uh, there's an incredible Foundations Impact page on your website with just inspiring stories and testimonies of how God has moved uh, into the hearts and healed hearts and minds through the foundation. Um, I know it's a hard question, uh, but you know, is there like a highlight or a story uh, that that you want to share with uh, viewers who might actually consider not just praying for you, but financially supporting your work for the veterans? There's so many great stories. We've had about 5,000 folks attend one of our week-long programs. And then through conferences and other things, we've spoken to tens of thousands of people. And so there's so many great stories. One of the stories that's on that impact page, there's actually a video. I think it's titled Mark's Story, maybe. And uh, it's about a friend of, of mine. In fact, he lives in this area that I live in. And we've gotten to know him and his family very, very well. But a great story of God's grace. He... he married two little kids. He had served in the Marine Corps and through a long series of events, which you can find on that video, 
um, got involved in alcohol, uh, not alcohol, drug abuse, um, and <laughs> was so drug addicted that he did not spend time with his wife, did not spend time with his kids. The post-traumatic stress from his combat service compounded those issues. He made one bad decision after another, attempted to take his own life by jumping off of a bridge. Um, and what he ended up doing was putting himself in the hospital for about six months, <laughs> didn't kill himself, got back to the place where he could walk, was separated from his wife. They were going two different directions. And as a last ditch effort, his wife said, go and try this Mighty Oaks thing. I was actually at the session that Mark attended. This was several years ago now. And um, just as broken a human as, as you can imagine, he had nowhere else to go. He didn't even have a home to go back to. Throughout the week, he gave his life to Christ and God started to do an amazing work. It's so crazy when you see someone show up on day one and they're just hopeless. And you know that look, you've seen it in people's eyes and even in the way they carry themselves and they sit. And then over a couple of days, understanding God created them with hope and purpose. He has a plan for their lives. And if they'll align their lives to the life he created them to live, they can enter into a relationship with him through Christ. When someone realizes that, it changes everything. And that was Mark. Uh, by the middle of the week, he was a different person. And we had so many great conversations about even next steps. He ended up leaving there. We got him into a, a drug rehab program that he could go to and, and deal with that. And he did. He's a firefighter now in the state of California. I mean, it's just an amazing, amazing story. But I remember toward the end of that week, he walked up to me with his phone in his hand and he, he wanted to show me a text. And it was a text from his wife. And it said, I love you. That's all it said. And he you know, I said, well, that's, that's great. <laughs> he said, no, you don't understand. That's the first time in four years, my wife has told me that she loves me. Wow. And that was him going through this process, coming to her, apologizing, saying, I know what I've done is wrong and I'm working on it. I'm getting back to the place I need to be. And I want our family to come back together. And she said, Mark, I love you. I don't know what this means, but I love you. And we're going to work through this together. And they, they did, they've been very involved in our program. His wife has attended our women's program. She's been very involved as a, as a leader in our program. It's, it's an amazing story, but it's, it's that 5,000 times over when God gets a hold of a person's life, everything changes. And it doesn't matter where you are, <laughs> what, what reason you have to give up that you can justify in your mind. God has a plan for you. And when you align to that plan, um, man, he wants to do an amazing work in your life and he will. And Mark to me, um, just watching his family grow and watching his kids get big and it, him and his wife just loving each other. They're so involved in their local church now. It's amazing. Um, but that's what God does. That's what God does. Wow, Jeremy. Um, so touching. Would you right now lead us in prayer for those viewers who may be veterans or family members of veterans, as God leads, would you close us off in prayer? This has been incredible. Yeah, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we, first of all, thank you for your love for us. And um, God, so many people ask, how can you possibly say that God loves me? We can say it because God said he loves us, <laughs> because he demonstrated that when he sent, uh, when you sent your son and God, we thank you for that demonstration of love that you committed. You demonstrated your love to us in that while we were yet sinners, broken, hopeless, far away from you, Christ died for us. God, we thank you for that truth. I pray for every person listening right now. And 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 we know people are all dealing with something. Maybe they served, maybe they didn't. Maybe it's deep post-traumatic stress. Maybe it's a family issue or a financial issue, whatever the issue that a person is facing right now, God, I pray they'd hang on to the truth that they have a God that loves them, a God that cares for them, a God that wants to work in their heart and work in their life and demonstrated that by dying on the cross for them. And God, I pray that they, whoever is listening, whoever needs that hope today would hang on, hang on to that truth. God, we thank you that you love us. We thank you for sending the gift of your son, Jesus. We thank you for the victory that is promised uh, in that relationship. And I pray for every broken heart, every struggling person today, God, that they would turn their eyes from their situation and their circumstance, that they would turn their eyes to you. And God, trust you and let you do the work that only you can do. And we thank you ahead of time. Based on your word and confidence in what you've said, we thank you ahead of time for the victory that they will experience as they surrender their lives 
to you. Thank you, God, for who you are, for what you'll do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Jeremy Stalnecker, thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you for representing Christ the way you do. May God bless you, your family, and may God continue to bless Mighty Oaks Foundation as you continue to heal the brokenhearted and set many free in Jesus' name. Love you so much. Thank you, Nick. Thank you for the opportunity and uh, love you guys and are so grateful to be able to partner with you on this. What's the website that everyone can go to, Jeremy? The website is Mighty Oaks Programs. That's with an S, mightyoaksprograms.org. Wonderful. Friends, make sure you go straight to that website. What an amazing follow-up conversation right there. Again, if you missed our first one that was released last year, I, again, highly recommend you to also watch that one because we actually covered many things that time as well and uh, a little bit more about his background and the start of the actual ministry, Mighty Oaks Foundation. While that topic is a very heavy topic, I want you to know that I love you and God loves you and there is nothing that God cannot remove that needs to be removed and there is nothing that God cannot heal that needs healing. And whether you are a veteran or you know someone, please just make sure that you always guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Get into the Word, continue to pray, and seek His face because we need Him in every part of our life. He loves you and sin, our sin, our addiction, our shame, our our feelings of feeling so far away from God sometimes. I just want you to know that God is here and He loves you right here, right now. So if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, please email us and go check out another couple videos. I'm sure God's going to move in you and your heart. We'd love to hear from you. Email us at life without limbs at Nick V Ministries. God bless you. And make sure that if any of the resources mentioned um, in this interview is of interest for you to uh, find, go to mightyoaksprograms.org for all of that, a free brochure and all the information on the programs that are given for free to any church uh, that is interested. Again, I want to thank everyone for watching and I encourage you to visit Champions for the Brokenhearted on our website, nickvministries.org, where you can also find additional resources uh, from other champion partners as well that are all passionately serving the brokenhearted. And I Lastly, ask you again, prayerfully consider supporting the Mighty Oaks Foundation as well as joining the Circle of Champions where you will take part financially in our mission here at Nick Bay Ministries to continue to see the brokenhearted healed in Jesus' name. Love you. God bless you. See you next time. Take care.